hey, so my wife, Dina, and I discovered that we were pregnant about a month ago. We have been married for three years. We're both 28 and we intend on going through with the pregnancy. Dina and I went to high school together, but didn't get together until much later. We were friends in high school, but she moved away for college and that's where she met her first husband, Alex. They got married right after they graduated, when she was around 22, and stayed together for a year before going their separate ways. I'll come to the reason later. Dina and I drifted apart after high school, but we reconnected when she moved back here, right after the divorce. A common friend of ours invited her to a Thanksgiving dinner several years ago, and that's where we met again for the first time after high school. We got to talking that day and I ended up asking her out, but she told me that she had just had a really bad divorce and was not looking to date yet, but she would gladly be friends with me again. I was content with that and so we exchanged numbers and started talking to each other more often. We became really good friends in the span of a year and after a while she was the one who asked me out. I said yes because I liked her and I could see a future with her. After dating for a couple of years, we decided to get married. And now we have been together for almost four years and married for two. When we found out that she was pregnant, she and I were both thrilled. So far, our relationship had been really dreamy and beautiful. We had fights like every other couple does, but we would always make up within hours and there would never be huge fights, just minor and insignificant disagreements. But our first big fight happened when we started discussing baby names. It has just been a month, but Dina has been really excited and started discussing baby names as soon as we found out that she was pregnant. She seemed pretty insistent about the name Philip if it was a boy. It was a nice name and I didn't have a problem with it, mostly because right now we were just spitballing and we could always change our minds later. Unfortunately, we hit a snag as soon as we announced the pregnancy to our friends. About two weeks ago, we decided to host a dinner for a couple of our friends so we could tell them about the pregnancy. Our families already knew and we had celebrated this whole thing with them. But that was kind of a family-only event and our friends were still in the dark. So we decided to have a separate dinner for them. They were all really happy for us too. Then Dina started talking about baby names at some point while we were having dinner. When she mentioned that she was thinking about naming the baby Philip if it was a boy, I noticed that her best friend Wendy seemed a little shocked, but didn't say anything. I didn't think much of it, but after dinner she told me that she was going out for a smoke, but she had forgotten her lighter and asked me if I could lend her mine. Dina doesn't like smoking, so she told the both of us to go out into the backyard and do whatever we had to do. Even up until then, everything was going fine, but as soon as she and I were out of earshot, she told me that she had something very important to discuss with me and started speaking in a really quiet voice. At first, I thought she was going to hit on me and was horrified, but instead she said something way worse. Apparently, Philip was the name that Dina had decided on during her first pregnancy when she was still with Alex. Wendy started off by saying that, you probably already know this, but I had no idea about any of it, and everything that she told me was brand new information for me. She told me that Alex and Dina had separated after she lost her baby in her fifth month, and Alex started cheating on her because he was grief-stricken. She and Wendy had been friends ever since they were kids, so she knew everything, and she also knew that Dina and Alex wanted to name their baby boy Philip. But unfortunately, after Dina lost the baby, both of them started fighting almost every day and Alex ended up cheating on her with another woman from work. He was the one who confessed to her after a few weeks of his affair and then they got divorced. I had never heard this version of what happened back then until Wendy told me and this is not something that people discuss anyway, so I couldn't exactly find out the truth from other sources. Dina had told me that she and Alex got divorced because they were fighting a lot since they were just incompatible. They got married young and it was a mistake. That's the version that I heard from her and believed until very recently. 
It never even occurred to me that she might not be telling me the truth because why would she want to lie to me about something like this? I wouldn't judge her regardless of which version she told me and also it wasn't like she came off looking bad in the true story so I couldn't imagine why she would want to keep that a secret from me. Anyway, Wendy told me that she had a feeling that I didn't know that it was the name that she had picked out with Alex and felt like it was a duty to tell me about it even though she was Dina's best friend. I thanked her for telling me about the context of the name, but she had no idea that she had told me a lot more than just the story behind the name. I tried my best to keep calm and stay composed for as long as our friends were in the house, but as soon as they left I confronted Dina about what Wendy had told me. She instantly denied everything and told me that Wendy must have been joking, but I ended up taking it seriously. But I knew what a joke was, and Wendy was most certainly not joking. So I kept insisting that she tell me the truth, and she finally confessed that whatever Wendy had told me was true, and she and Alex had separated because he had been cheating on her after she lost her baby. Everybody in her family knew about it, and so did a few of her friends. She hadn't really stayed in touch with any of her friends from here when she was with Alex, apart from Wendy, so most people here have no idea about her pregnancy or the loss of her baby, since she didn't post any of it on social media. She planned on announcing it around her sixth month, but sadly, she never got there. She told me that she had left Alex and all her friends behind and had come back here because staying there was too painful. Wendy had known everything all along and she had assumed that once we started dating, I would get to know her too. But given the sensitive nature of the topic, it never came up and I never found out the truth until that day. Her family knew, but they had been told not to share it with me because she didn't want me to know about this. She said that it was really personal and it was a very traumatic experience for her, which is why she never wanted to talk about it again. But as much as I wanted to drop the topic and never bring it up again for her sake, I couldn't do that because I still needed answers. I told her that I respected the fact that she was traumatized from what had happened back then, but I still needed to talk about this and get to the bottom of certain things that I still didn't understand. I couldn't figure out why she hadn't told me the truth even after we got married because I felt like this was something really huge and I should have been kept in the loop about it. And more importantly, she was planning on naming our baby a name that she had picked out with her cheating ex-husband. That seemed kind of weird and I wanted to talk about why she was so inclined towards that name. Going by her logic, if she had abandoned everything in her past, including Alex and all her friends, because it was too traumatic for her to relive, then shouldn't she have left that name behind in the past as well? It just didn't add up. I was trying to talk to her, but she just kept ignoring me and scrolling through Instagram on her phone. So I got kind of annoyed and told her that she needed to talk to me because she owed me the truth. She snapped at me when I said that and started yelling at me saying that now that I already knew the truth, she owed me absolutely nothing. She then said that I was being a jealous and insecure narcissist and forcing her to talk about things that she wanted to forget because of how traumatic it was for her. I apologized instantly, but I also mentioned that even if we didn't talk about it right then, we had to get everything out in the open at some point, because at that moment I was feeling betrayed and hurt, and it was like she didn't even care about my feelings. But she told me that she never wanted to talk about this again, and then the fight got even worse. We had been fighting for almost half an hour when she finally gave up and said that she couldn't do this anymore and started packing her things. She told me that she was going to go live with her parents for a while until she calmed down and suggested that I think about my own behavior with a cooler head and get back to her when I'm ready to act like a grown-up instead of a little boy. I was very tired of fighting with her, so I let her go and I didn't stop her. I also didn't appreciate the fact that she was trying to belittle my feelings and act like it was no big deal that she had been lying to me for years about why she had really divorced Alex. I was very angry, upset and hurt, so I didn't think it was worth it to get into another fight by trying to stop her from leaving. On top of that, this was the first time that we were fighting about something so big that she had actually left. So I had no idea what to do next. 
I tried to distract myself for the next couple of days by throwing myself into work. I kept waiting for her to call or text, but there was just radio silence from her end, which was even more disappointing. I would have preferred for her to call me even if it was just to yell at me. The silence was much worse than the fighting, and after a while I just couldn't take it anymore because I wanted answers and I wanted a solution. So about a week and a half ago, I went to her parents' place from work to talk to Dina. But when I got there, they told me that she wasn't with them and said that I had to leave because I had caused a lot of pain to their daughter and she had been devastated when she showed up at their house. They said that I was selfish for forcing her to talk about things that she wasn't ready to talk about just because I felt bad about it, even though she was the one who had to go through something ten times worse. They also brought up how I hadn't even tried to contact her in the days after she left and told me that she had been waiting for me to call. But when I didn't call for an entire day, she decided that she was going to go on an impromptu trip to clear her head and that's where she was. I begged them to tell me where she was, but they told me that they weren't allowed to tell me and if I wanted to talk to her, then I could call her myself. Then they shut the door on my face and told me to leave them alone because they were not going to help me out with this. It was humiliating to be treated that way, but I was more worried about where Dina was, so I went back home and I decided to call her. She did answer my call, thankfully, but she still refused to tell me where she was. I didn't apologize to her on the phone because I still didn't think I had said anything out of line, but I did tell her that I wanted to talk to her. To that, she responded by saying that she was not ready to have a conversation yet, if that's what I meant. And more importantly, now that she finally had some time to think because she was on her own, she had been reevaluating our relationship and she no longer knew if she even wanted to be with me anymore. She said that she liked the name Philip and it had nothing to do with her previous marriage or pregnancy. I was the only one who was thinking along those lines, along with Wendy, who she claimed was just being stupid and stirring the pot. And it just grossed her out because it made me look really juvenile and insecure. There was also the fact that I hadn't even bothered to reach out to her after the fight, even after I had made her feel horrible. I tried to tell her that I believed that my concerns were valid because she had been lying to me for years, but she disregarded all of it. She told me that she was going to be out of town for a couple more days and she wanted me to think about everything and decide if I wanted to act normal or continue to have a fit about something so petty. She said that if I could bring myself to accept her past and her unwillingness to discuss it, then we could move forward and get counseling to deal with our emotions. But if I still had a problem with her wanting to name our child Philip, then she would file for divorce because she couldn't be with a man who didn't understand her. She told me that it was my call to make and she would be okay with whatever I decided to do. Then she disconnected the call before I had a chance to say anything else. I was conflicted about what to do, so I couldn't give her an answer when she came back a few days ago. She called me on the day that she returned and asked me if I had made up my mind, so I told her that I hadn't and that I needed some more time to think about what I wanted to do. She said that she was okay with that, but the longer I took to think about it, the less faith she had in me. And that stung. It's been a few days and I haven't spoken to her because I still don't understand what I should do. This is a really complicated situation. I want a future with her and my child, but she's acting so unreasonably that I don't even know how that's going to be possible. I truly don't think that what she did was okay because she had been lying to me about something so significant and I don't know if I can just forgive and forget. She has also been invalidating my feelings and making me feel like I'm overreacting, but I'm pretty sure that I'm not. I can't talk to my friends and family about this because it feels too much to share with the people that I actually know. AITA for refusing to let my wife name our future kid a name that she picked out with her ex-husband? Update 1. Hi guys, thank you so much for the verdict and the advice, it was really helpful. So thanks for that because I was absolutely lost on what to do. With a heavy heart, I had to come to the conclusion that if we can't sort things out with each other, then a divorce might be the only way out of this. But that's pretty much my last resort and I do want to do my best to make things work even though 
Our relationship is very dysfunctional at this stage. So I told Dina that I wanted to make things work. And she said that so did she. But for that, I needed to stop thinking about just myself. She said that on the phone and it irritated me, but I didn't let it get to me because I needed her to come back home so we could talk and clear the air. So I ignored that and I told her that we needed to have a conversation in person and she agreed. And we met last night when she came back home to talk to me. I could tell that she had been in some beachy area because she had a tan and I was instantly annoyed because while I was losing my mind over here trying to think of a way to make our marriage work, she was out frolicking and having fun on the beach. She was also really curt with me while greeting me and was acting as though we were strangers. So we got off to a rough start, but we still went through with the conversation that needed to be had and I brought up all the issues that had been bothering me in the last couple of days. I told her everything about how she had been invalidating my feelings and trying to downplay the seriousness of what she had done. And while I respected and understood the fact that it had been a traumatic experience for her, I couldn't just ignore everything that I was feeling because she wasn't comfortable talking about these things. And I reminded her that we wouldn't even have to have this conversation at this stage of our relationship after we were married and were now even expecting a child together. Had she just been honest with me right from the beginning, I thought she was going to argue with me, but she didn't and said that she could understand where I was coming from and she was sorry about it, which was a welcome change in her attitude towards the situation. But she didn't stop there and went on to tell me that while she was sorry about not being honest with me, she was also very upset with me because I had been horrible to her after the party when I found out the truth. And it was very upsetting to know that I wouldn't ever stop and think about my family because I was too egoistic. I didn't understand what she was referring to until she said that she had been waiting for me to call after the fight because she was pregnant and it wasn't right for me to just ignore her that way. She was very disappointed that it took me three whole days to come around and finally go looking for her. Her parents had told her that even on the day that I visited them, I had waited until I got off work to go look for her and talk to her. And she said that just made her feel like she wasn't important enough to me. I tried to defend myself because I was in a bad place mentally at the time as well and was struggling to process and accept a lot of things. I did apologize for it, but I also said that she could have reached out to me as well and to that she said that she shouldn't have had to because she was the one who was pregnant and I should have been more concerned about her. I tried to tell her that I was concerned about her but I was also a human being and I was feeling bad and that's why I didn't reach out to her first. So then she brought up how I didn't even try to find out where she was when I got to know that she wasn't staying with her parents and was out on a solo trip. She said that anything could have gone wrong with her and I wouldn't even have got to know until it was too late. I thought it was weird that she was turning all this around on me, so I told her that I didn't go looking for her or try to find out where she was because I could understand that she wanted some time away from me and all our relationship issues, which is why she left in the first place. And I didn't want to intrude and make her even more mad. I also trusted her and her judgment and was sure that she wouldn't do anything that would put herself or our future child in danger because she was a grown woman and can think for herself. But that wasn't satisfactory enough for her as an explanation and she told me that I had let her down by not even trying to look for her and protect her while she was in such a vulnerable state. And apparently that's why she said all those things about not wanting to be with me anymore and losing faith in me. I kept trying to explain to her that I was worried about her and I was losing my mind over here but I didn't want to turn up at a place that she went just to be away from me and make her even more mad. I wasn't willing to take the risk, so that's why I just stayed at home and waited for her to come back. But she wasn't willing to accept that explanation. We ended up getting into another fight. She said that I didn't care about her enough and that she didn't know if she could do this anymore, so she needed a little more time away from me to sort out how she felt about all of this. She left after that and we haven't spoken since then. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen. And in all probability, we might have to get divorced because I personally can't think of any way that this is going to work. It's been frustrating for me because I really wanted to make things work, but it appears to me that she isn't willing to budge from her stance 
and is bent on making me out to be the bad guy just for expressing my emotions and feeling things. Update 2. So I found out something really terrible a couple of hours ago and I guess I should have seen this coming. I was talking to Wendy about the situation with Dina because nobody else knew her as well as she did and I was hoping that she could help me out here somehow. We hadn't spoken ever since the day of the party and I hadn't told any of my friends or family about the kind of fights that Dina and I had been having. But today I just couldn't stop overthinking about literally everything and I decided to call Wendy for help and I'm so glad that I did because I don't think I would have found out about Dina and her affair otherwise. That's right. She's been cheating on me. I don't know for how long and I don't know why, but she's back with Alex now. Wendy told me that she had actually been waiting for me to contact her as soon as she answered my call and that was kind of confusing because it wasn't so she and I were close and talked on the phone very often. She didn't even let me get a word in and started telling me that she had been thinking about reaching out to me for several days now but didn't feel comfortable betraying her best friend and making things worse for Dina since she'd already caused enough trouble by telling me the real reason behind her first divorce and the lore of the name Philip, so she waited for me to contact her first. She then sent me a picture that Dina had uploaded on her Instagram story a couple of days ago and I'm sure that she had hidden it from me by changing the privacy settings because I hadn't been able to see any of her stories ever since our fight. I didn't understand what it was about because it was just a picture of her in a bikini lying on a lounge chair on the beach with her sunglasses on. It was a cool picture but that was about it and I didn't notice anything off. But then Wendy pointed out an arm in the corner, another guy was lying on the next lounge chair and the person had been cropped out but their arm was still in the picture. It was definitely a guy and Wendy told me that she didn't think there was anything weird about it either until she noticed that there was a tattoo on the guy's arm near their wrist. On zooming in she found out that it was a motorcycle tattoo identical to the one that Alex had. It was a very minute detail and nobody would have noticed it but she told me that she remembered it from when Alex first got it and Dina sent her thousands of photos when they were married. Wendy had even messaged Dina to ask if it was Alex that she was on the beach with but she didn't say anything and just responded with a motorcycle emoji. Wendy told me that she wasn't exactly sure if it was Alex or just somebody with the same tattoo and even tried to say that maybe it wasn't even the same tattoo because it was quite pixelated but I could very clearly make out that that was in the shape of a motorcycle it wasn't that pixelated and Wendy was just trying to second guess herself so I wouldn't feel bad. But as soon as I heard that Dina had responded with a motorcycle emoji I started feeling sick to my stomach. It was quite typical of Dina to act smug about these things and I already knew deep down that she had indeed been cheating on me. After my phone call with her I decided to call my dad immediately and asked him to put me in touch with a divorce lawyer at the earliest because I wanted to be out of this marriage. I texted Dina and I asked her about that picture but she hasn't replied to me yet and I really don't need her to respond because I already know the truth. I know that she had definitely been cheating on me and that's why she was fighting with me so much. There was just no other explanation for how strangely she had been behaving. I feel terrible about it of course but this just gives me an excuse to leave and put myself first without feeling guilty and I needed that because I'm just sick of constantly dealing with her and these fights. I can't do this anymore and I want nothing more than to be away from her. Update 3. Hi guys, so it's been two months since I filed for divorce. There was a lot of drama when I accused Dina of cheating on me with Alex but eventually she confessed that she had and had been hooking up with him behind my back for almost a year. Alex had reached out to her last year when he was around for a work conference and she decided to meet him for one last time without telling me because she wanted closure but they ended up getting together and he even quit his job and moved here permanently so he could be closer to her. She had been trying to build up the nerve to tell me that she was with him but just couldn't do it. She did apologize to me for it but that apology meant nothing. So there is a real chance that the baby might not even be mine and we are waiting for it to be born so we can judge who gets custody. 
I have made up my mind that if the baby turns out to be mine, then I get full custody. And if it isn't, then they can keep it. I'm seeing a shrink to deal with all my feelings and trying to make sense of my life right now. It's going decently and I'm just trying to hold myself together. Thanks to everyone who reached out to me here and commented on my post. It's really nice of you guys. Update four. Hey, so quick update. The baby was born a month ago. He's mine and I get full custody. The divorce also came through a couple of months back and I got to keep everything that belonged to me. No alimony either, which was a huge bummer for them, but that's what cheaters get. Nothing. I'm doing considerably better than before and finally getting my life back together. It's much easier when you don't have a crazy wife to deal with. Again, thank you so much for checking in on me, folks. Stay tuned for more stories from our girl relationships.